Hello, I'm Gerald De La Porta, and I'm here to talk today about community asset mapping in Canandaigua, New York, and more specifically with Canandaigua City School District. So we'll first move into some background in the city of Canandaigua. Canandaigua is located in the Finger Lakes region of western New York. In 2019, it was voted one of the best cities in New York to live in by chamberofcommerce.org. In 2017, the population was 10,289 people. The average household income was about $15,000 lower than the state average at right around $50,000. And the average home costs $171,000 here in Canandaigua. It's a rapidly growing town. It's lots of events, festivals in normal years. Um, Main Street, as you can see in this picture here, is decorated for the seasons, which is something that I really love here. It's lots of local history and just a great sense of community. And here I just want to share with you another view of Canandaigua, one of my favorites. Um, this is again Main Street, which is the main drag right down through town, um, which kind of ends, as you can see there, in the lake, Canandaigua Lake, which is a great spot to go and hang out. There's a lot of great beauty in the outdoors out here as well. All right, so moving into some statistics. Uh, unfortunately, 14.7% of Canandaigua's residents live in poverty. Um, just a couple demographic statistics. 13.5% of whites live in poverty. 23.1% of black residents. 34.2% of Hispanic or Latino residents. And sadly, 100% of American Indian residents live in poverty. And then that's a mix for other mixed race uh, statistics. Our crime level has fluctuated over the last decade, settling at about 178.7 points in 2018, which is about 96 points below the U.S. average. The population is not very diverse. 91.6% of, of the population here in Canandaigua is white, 2% is Hispanic, 1.6% Asian, 1.4% Black, and less than 1% Hawaiian, American Indian, or other races. All right. So moving here to my community asset map that I created. So I kind of broke it down by categories just as the example was. So to start with, we have a lot of good institutions here in the community in Canandaigua. Um, one of the primary which is of course, Canandaigua City School District, CCSD there. We also have Finger Lakes Community College, which is a big part of the community. It's one of the things Canandaigua is known for. It's also the Thompson Hospital System, which is part of the University of Rochester uh, Medical Group. There are numerous parks throughout Canandaigua that are really good. Um, Wood Library is another institution right on Main Street, and I'll talk about that more later. They also have lots and lots of great local businesses, many of them right up and down Main Street. There's restaurants, little shore, uh, sorry, stores, novelty shops, things of that nature. Then we also have some great community groups. We have many local churches, again, many of them on Main Street. Main Street is definitely the hub of our town, like it is most. Uh, we also have a bunch of, well, not a bunch, several uh, shelters and food pantries. A couple of them are run by the Catholic Charities Organization. Um, we also have some other community assets like the YMCA, the Historical Society, which sets up events with a lot of the local museums. As I said, there's a lot of local history here. And then festivals in normal years. You know, there's always something going on every couple of weeks down on Main Street. We also have individual assets like the Parent Teacher Association that are advocating for uh, students at the school. We have the Education Enrichment Fund, which is part of the school, and I'll talk about that in greater depth later. Uh, community volunteers that help out. We've got the Sands family, which owns Constellation Brands in the area, and they have a long-standing history of donating money back to the community. Um, recently, I think they donated something like $61 million to community development, which is fantastic. And CCSD also has a long-standing history of alumni uh, donating back to their school and community. They have a whole page dedicated to that on their website, in fact. So now we'll move on here to some of the school district uh, info. Uh, first, I'd like to point out here, there's a chart of the student population that I created just to show the actual numbers of students. Um, but we can also discuss the percentages. 88% white, as again, I said, Canandaigua is not very diverse. 5% Hispanic or Latino, 4% multiracial, 2% black or African American. 2% Asian, Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander, and less than 1% American Indian or Alaska Native. In 2018, there were 3,431 students K-12 through in Canandaigua Central School District. Um, CCSD is comprised of the elementary school, the middle school, and then Canandaigua Academy, which is the high school. Class size is around 16 to 21 students. They tend to get a little smaller as you get older and you, know, you progress through the grade levels. 
Um, 1% of students are English language learners, 15% of students have a disability, 37% are economically disadvantaged, and less than 1% are homeless. All right. Um, also, the school received a 4 out of 4 score on the um, college and civic and career readiness chart on the NYSED website. They also have a 93% four-year graduation rate, meaning that students who enter uh, ninth grade, usually, typically, 93% of them graduate within four years, so they complete each grade level on time. And test scores are around average for the state, some of them being slightly above average. All right, so some of the school assets. I first want to begin here with CCSD's mission statement, which is explore, enrich, empower. The Canandaigua City School District is dedicated to creating enriched, world-class educational experiences that engage all learners, foster meaningful exploration, and empower our school community to have their voices heard. So one of the primary assets that I really like about CCSD is the Education Enrichment Fund. And the Education Enrichment Fund was established in 1997, and it serves to support the school's mission statement by providing enhanced learning opportunities and resources that are not ordinarily available within the school budget. Funding comes from the public, grants, um, school staff donate some of their paycheck to this fund, and it really serves to encourage students' creativity and it provides programs of excellence, like it says in the school's mission statement. And the EEF is overseen by the Finger Lakes Area Community Endowment and an advisory committee, meaning that Money can't just be handed out for anything. It has to be a good cause. Um, the EEF has helped to create the school's first robotics club, the Lego robotics team, the middle school garden, an outdoor classroom, and so many other programs that they talk about more on their website. But those were some of the coolest ones I identified. And then there are also lunch programs for students. As I said, there are 37% uh, living in economic disadvantage situations. So for those that can't afford their lunches, there are free or reduced cost lunches. Um, the cafeteria also promotes healthy choice options like salad and fresh fruit. There's various athletics throughout the school. Um, there's intramurals, the sports teams, activities to stay healthy throughout the day and things like that. There are also foreign language programs. I believe those are Spanish and French. Um, they believe it's important to be a good member of your community and learn other languages to communicate. And there's also a good special education program at CCSD as well as English language learner programs. Uh, classrooms are neat and relatively modern. They feature technology that is pretty up-to-date and used as learning aids. Books are new within the last five to seven years, and students also receive Chromebooks that they get to use throughout the year. All right, moving on now to some community assets. Um, there are many community assets. Like I mentioned before, there are parks like the uh, Kershaw Park, the Logan Lagoon Park, and the Richard P. Outhouse Park. Uh, there are several churches up and down Main Street, as I mentioned before, as well as restaurants and local businesses. There are shelters like the Catholic Charities Shelter and Pathstone, uh, food pantries by Churches in Action and the Salvation Army. There's also Thompson Hospital, which is a big part of our community. You know, if people are not feeling well or there's an emergency, there's a great hospital as well as its urgent care uh, centers in the area. There's also Canandaigua Lakes and Beaches and the Sands Family Donations that I mentioned before. So moving on to some more specific community assets and institutions. The first one I wanna talk about is Finger Lakes Community College. Um, this is a school that serves much of the surrounding area in the Finger Lakes. Um, I grew up 40 minutes from Canandaigua and I actually attended FLCC out of high school. Um, great community college, great way to transition into what college life is like, what the academic expectations are. And I really enjoyed my time there. It was helpful and it helps so many students in the area, not to mention you save money. And they also provide collegiate credit programs, which help students to save money as well. And what that is, is they work with the local high schools to provide courses that count for college credit at a lower cost. That's something I took advantage of as I was a junior and senior, and I'm very glad I did. I need to do that here with CCSD as well as many surrounding schools. Um, that kind of ties into my next point. They have connections with many local schools. And they also engage the community through events and programs. Um, in typical years, they have some sort of event in the fall and spring, and the community is welcome to partake in that. They also have the uh, CMAG Performing Arts Center, which is part of Constellation Brands as well, where there are concerts and things like that, uh, usually several times throughout the summer. All right, the next asset I want to move on to in the community is the YMCA here in Canandaigua. Um, they have a lot of different youth programs before and after school care, which I think is really important for students whose families work um, 
different hours so they can't be home when they get off the bus or something like that. These students have a safe place to go. They can work on their schoolwork, uh, stay fit and healthy. Same is true of school break programs for the same reasons. There's also the YMCA Learning Center, which was brought about in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the YMCA recognized that uh, not every student has access to the internet, not every student is going to do well with remote learning, um, and recognizing the fact as well that there are days that students will miss um, learning if they're not necessarily having those remote learning situations or face-to-face -face classes. So they can come to the YMCA Learning Center and get a supplemental education there. It's run by certified teachers and teacher aides, which is really cool. It's also youth swimming for fitness. There's summer camps as well. Um, there's connections to the community for, uh, because of there's programs for people of all ages, you know, elderly. Um, there's a lot of focus on maintaining health. Next, I want to talk about the Wood Library. The Wood Library is another really cool asset in the community. Um, they're located right in the heart of Main Street, and it's a safe place, again, where all, everyone in the community can go. But particularly for children of all ages, um, they can go there for the same reasons I mentioned at the YMCA. There's a safe place for them to stay, um, come and do homework and things like that if you know, no one's at home and they might be a little too young to be home on their own. Um, for the youth, and particularly ages you know, fifth grade and below, there's a variety of reading programs available. One that I think is kind of cool right now is there's a virtual bedtime story program where students can turn in, um, I think it's at 8 o'clock at night, and one of the librarians there reads a bedtime story to them. I think that's very neat in light of everything going on right now. It's a bit of positivity. There's also crafts and toys for kids to explore and learn with. Um, while they're there, you know, as you can see, uh, the mission statement of CCSD really holds true throughout the community, um, as well as the YMCA and Wood Library and FLCC. They're all working together to facilitate um, better learning for our students in the community. Uh, there's also the teen scene, which I think supports this mission statement very well. The teen scene offers a safe place for teens to come and study. There's a reference librarian there who specializes in helping teenage uh, students. They can come for help with projects, with research. If they're just trying to find a good book to read, there's a lot to offer there. They can also just have a nice, safe place to hang out with friends, um, come and blow off steam, and they're there in a safe place. Their parents know where they are. It's just a good situation. Um, it's also the Teen Advisory Board, which I think is really cool. The library sets that up where teens can advocate for them and their fellow peers for better programs or different programs at the library, and it gives them a chance to experience what it's like to be on a committee, what it's like to work together to develop positive change for yourself and your community, which is really cool about a good way for students to connect back. And there's many resources for the community as a whole. <laughs> One that I think is cool is you can rent a fishing pole and tackle box and walk down to the lake and do some fishing if you're so inclined but don't have the equipment yourself. There's also uh, free Wi-Fi, um, let's see what else, tech assistance. If you're not knowing how to use your Nook or your Kindle, you can go there and get some help. Uh, there's job help, computers, um, help with uh, creating a resume, and other things, but those are the most pertinent ones I thought to mention. So now I just want to talk about coming together as a community as a whole. Um, as you can see here, Hanandegua is a community with a lot to offer. We've got a very strong school district with lots of great programs, the athletics, the education enrichment fund, great community resources like the Wood Library, FLCC, the YMCA, as well as the hospitals, the food pantries, and things like that. And the local institutions, the community institutions, um, the school, and the individual volunteers and things like that, they all come together to make this a great place to live. Um, I've lived here for a little over a year now, and I can't imagine leaving. It's just such a tight-knit community with a lot of feeling of home. You know, it just feels right, and I think part of that is reflected in this presentation, just showing all the different great things there are here in Canandaigua, how they all fit together. Um, and CCSD is a school that I could definitely see myself teaching at and being a great part of this community for a long time to come. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and have a great and happy and safe holiday. Bye.